When we make an interactive graphic, one of the things that we want to give the user the ability to do is to really think about changes in the level of focus. The metaphor that I like to use to describe this is moving in between levels of detail when you're looking at a tree versus a forest. Now, as you start sort of right up really super close to the tree, you all you can when you look at the tree, all you can really see is the bark and you can look at the shape of the bark and the color of the bark, and but you can't really see the whole tree. Now, as you start to back up, maybe you get to see the, the diameter of the tree, maybe you get to see a little bit of the, the branching structure, but you can't see the top of the tree, you can't see the roots, you can't see much of it all. But as you start to step back, you are able to see a little bit more of the structure of the tree. You might be able to see the branches and the top but you've lost detail at the bark level. You can't really see the, the structure of the bark or the flakiness. You can still see the color, but, but there's been some detail that's been lost. Now, as you step back even further, you might be able to see the way that the tree fits in with its environment, but you can no longer see details about the leaves or even the branches at that point. It just kind of all merges into one thing. And so as you take in the scene at different distances from the tree, you get different levels of detail about what's going on with that tree. Now, each of these levels is very interesting and important information can be gleaned from being up close or being far back. But the question that you want to answer determines what level of focus you want to be on. And so as I sort of develop tools that allow people to ask questions and answer them with data, I want to always be thinking about how can I build a tool that allows the user to change the, the resolution of the data. So maybe at some point you want to have a big wide open viewpoint of the data and, and everything is sort of fuzzy and we don't have a lot of detail, but it gives the overall structure of what you're trying to present and then allows the user to dig down into fine scale information and dig deeper on certain sections but that sort of zooming in and out of the data is extremely powerful. And we want to try to figure out how do we design uh, interactive graphics to allow us to do that. Online mapping software is a really great example of this ability to kind of zoom in and out. Uh, when we have an interactive map, I can have a either like a super small scale environment where I can look at the neighborhood level of information and I can see, oh, given where I am and I want to go to Safeway, how am I going to go there? You know, this, this level of, of fine scale information is really amazing. But the most powerful aspect of this is that I can actually zoom back out and see a broader scale view of the world. For example, if I want to see Arizona, I can see details about Arizona. If I want to zoom out to the country, I can see the broad scale information about the United States. If I want to go even farther out, I can see information about the world. And the ability to go in and out is really absolutely astounding. Um, most of you who are watching this probably don't even remember that there used to just be maps that you would keep in a car that had this big, huge book of, of, of maps on the states. And you would look at this and use it, figure out how you would go across country. but if you wanted to navigate within a city, you were pretty much stuck without without any sort of information. This really is foundationally a, a huge change. Right now I'm looking at a fairly detailed map of Flagstaff, Arizona, and you can see the individual city blocks, you can see places to eat at, and various things, but if I want to scroll farther out, I can do that very easily. And at different zoom levels, you get an idea of sort of what's going on with the interstates. And as we back up, we can look at how Flagstaff interacts with sort of northern Arizona and the different cities in there. Now, notice that I've lost all the detail about Flagstaff. I can no longer see information about NAU. I can no longer see the restaurants. But I've got a different level of information because now I've got the different cities and the national forests and the interstates. So... Right now, this map has a bunch of information, but it's not an overwhelming amount of information. 
you can imagine if I had all the city, all for every city I had all the restaurants and all of the shops, you would you wouldn't be able to see anything, and it would just be a confusing, gigantic mess. So, what Google has done in these maps is tried to always present an amount of information that you can easily take in and, and digest it at any point in time. And so at different zoom levels, the whole idea is to give you as much information on that particular map as you can handle while still being understandable. So now as we zoom farther out, we're going to lose some of the smaller cities. And now we're just keeping in the major metropolitan areas along with the interstates. Zoom even farther out. It's hard for me to remember which way is zooming farther out. And now you see just these, you know, largest metropolitan areas. And now we see state level borders along with the country borders. Every time we zoom out, we still have information, but now the scale of that information is different. An example of an interactive graphic is this uh, Tableau example that uh, demonstrates the history of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen is an artist who's had a long career, who was introduced in the 70s and 80s and has had a very long career. And looking at his, his uh, career is a little daunting. And so this graphic tries to look at it by different albums. And what we can see is this axis over here gives the song popularity on Spotify. And this interestingly gives popularity per song on each album. And so you can kind of look across his, his albums and see a bunch of information that, you know, primarily his early albums are probably the most popular, but there's still quite a bit of popular popularity in his new work with the exception of this particular album now. This bottom axis gives the popularity in terms of sales rank, and you can see that some of his earlier albums were in fact the uh, his most popular, seeing this Born to Run and Born in the USA, which are probably his most iconic uh, albums. Now, individually, you can sort of look at these albums and know something about what the individual albums are doing, but you can dig in a little bit more detail. So you can look at the popularity of individual songs. So if I hold, hover over this Born to Run song, it'll give me a bunch more information about this particular uh, Born to Run song. And there's some excerpts from uh, Bruce Springsteen's autobiography, and it'll tell you information about that particular song where we've got the you've got the popularity, you've got the measure of how acoustic it is, how danceable it is, what the energy level is, what the valence is for this. Um, and we can scroll to individual different, uh, different songs on the album as well. So that's actually really, really cool. Um, next, you can sort of move across these individual albums and do this. Now, this this uh, middle row is talking about the uh, different song or music. I, I don't want to say atmosphere or, you know, but there's some song types. So low energy, sort of uh, more mellow versus high energy versus um, high energy, high valence. I'm not quite sure what valence means, um, but that's something that they're quantifying here. Um, now down here you can look at the individual pedals and the individual pedals represent band members and notice as I hover over a particular band member you can see where where they were on different albums so in this particular case you can see that Gary Talent actually was in almost all of the albums so as you look at this you can see that there are only two members of the E Street Band that played on Lucky Town and that this, this album, uh, Devils in Dust, also only had two people. So these were much more quiet, you know, smaller band, more intimate, sort of uh, just Bruce Springsteen and, and a couple other people. Um, this was a, a solo album where it was just him and, and yeah, it was just him. It's just Bruce Springsteen. Um, so this actually allows for a different level of information 
where you can kind of see big trends when you look at just the overall curve of the yellow stuff and then you can see what ha is happening with the band on the bottom so you can dig into individual songs but you can also look at just the overall effect of individual albums so this allows you to kind of depending on how much detail you want you can just look at the yellow stuff or you can dig into individual songs so this allows for different levels of, of data resolution depending on what you hover on versus what you don't.